look with me in verse number 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. The verse serves to remind us that we are not obligated to live after the flesh any longer. In fact, we are dead to the flesh and alive to the Spirit of God. If we wish to, to, to discharge a debt, let it be a debt we owe to Christ for the price he paid to deliver us from the bondage of sin and the sentence of judgment. How much do I owe God? How can I repay God? How can I say thanks to God? What, what currency can I use to exchange with God to tell him thank you for all that you've done for me, for, for saving me, for raising me, for giving me new life in Christ. I owe God my all. I'm in debt this morning. Uh, I, my, my debt is unpayably great because when I was lost in sin, Jesus came and become, he became my substitute. He became payment for my ransom. He died in my place. Uh, the psalmist put it like this, what shall I render under God for all his, his benefits towards me? He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. And, and then when I get through pray, uh, praying, I'm going to pay my vows. And then when I get through paying my vows, he said, I'm going to worship God everywhere I go. Every time I get a chance, I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to tell God, thank you. Not just because I want to, but because I ought to. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters. I don't, I don't come to church because I have to. I come to church because I ought to. Because God's been so good to me. I'm in such debt. I don't know about you, but my sins are so unpayably great that when I look back over my life and see where God has brought me from and how God is still keeping me in spite of who I am, I owe God. I owe him praise. I owe him thanks. I owe him glory. I owe him honor. The tithe is a small thing to pay. Praise is a small thing to pay. If I live a thousand years, I still couldn't tell God thank you enough because I'm indebted to him. Not to the flesh, not, not to my old way of life because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passing away and behold, all things are becoming new. Verse 12 says, therefore, we are debtors not to the flesh, not to the old life, but we are debtors to live for Christ. He went to the cross in my place. He died one Friday. He rose one Sunday morning. He's, he lives, he ever lives to make intercession for us. I was thinking about it when we were singing that hymn uh, before the intercessory prayer time, Oh, to be kept by Jesus. I was thinking about it. Um, do, do you think is your mask that's keeping you from getting coronavirus? Uh, do, do you think it's because you're socially distancing yourself and washing your hands and, and got Lysol and sanitizer and, and all of that, that that's keeping you safe? It's not your mask that's keeping you. It's not you washing your hands and socially distancing that's keeping you. Because there's some people better by nature than we are by practice who died from coronavirus. You are kept by the power of God. And it's not because you've been so good, not because you are being so careful and being so sanitary. It's nothing but the power of the living God. Oh, the elder said it like this. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way, clothed and in my right mind with a reasonable portion of my health and strength. Uh, they, they, would, they would pray like this. Thank you that the bed I laid in, yeah, yeah. I wish I had a witness here, was not my cooling board and the covers that I laid in was not my winding sheet. He touched me with a finger of love and my eyes sprang wide open and I beheld a brand new day. I owe God everything. That's the challenge, to war, to fight, to resist 
the power of Satan and the flesh. But verse number 13 gives us a caution. We've been changed, we've been challenged, but then verse 13 has a caution. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify or kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. Listen, your flesh ain't going to just drop on its own. You got to kill it. Somebody ought to help me talk here. Your sinful desires are not just going to go away because you turn 50. No, it's some folk in the 80s still sinning. Uh, your, your, the deeds of the body that you got to modify. You got to wake up in the morning determined that today I'm going to kill you. Uh, um, when, when we were growing up in my mom and daddy's house, my daddy had a word that uh, he, jo Johnny could get away with anything. But I was just so scared to hear my daddy's voice. If my daddy would call my name, I'd be trembling all in my shoes. But Johnny could get away with anything. My daddy had a word that he would say to us when he, when he got married. He didn't cuss much. My mama was the cusser. That's how I learned how to cuss, fooling with my mama. But my daddy didn't use profanity that much. He would say, boy, I'm going to half kill you. And uh, I would just be shaking in my shoes, and Johnny could get away with anything. Johnny said, don't half kill me. Just kill me because I don't want to suffer. Just go on and get it over with. And my daddy said, Lena, you see that boy? I'm, 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 that boy going to make me half kill him. My mom said, you ain't going to do nothing. Because all that half killing, them children would have been dead by now. Uh, I'm, my son, I'm going to halfway kill you. Well, you can't half kill sin. You, 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 you got to go all the way with that. Because if you half kill it, it'll be back tomorrow. Somebody ought to help me testify. Uh, I've, I've tried half killing it, and it's still coming up even right now. But thank God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, you can modify, kill the deeds of the flesh. Even though we are saved, we still have the potential to live after the flesh. However, we must be aware that living substandard Christian lives brings with it death. Now the death I'm talking about now is not physical death or spiritual death because the soul that is born again will never die. We cannot go to hell. If you're a Christian and you sin, you don't have to get saved again because the soul that belongs to God can never be destroyed. Uh, in the language of my pastor, M.C. Hammer, Satan, you can't touch this because my soul belongs to God. That will never sin. That can never be contaminated. But as long as I am in this flesh, as long as I struggle in the old nature, we can feel the chastening hand of the Heavenly Father because whom God loves, Hebrew says, he chastens. And he scourges, he, he punishes, he whips, he disciplines because we have sin. Verse 11 of Hebrews chapter number 12 says, Now no chastening for the present seems joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. The believer's once for all death to the law of sin does not free him from the necessity of mortifying sin in the members of his body. Rather, it makes it necessary and it makes it possible in order to do so. The Holy Spirit working in us does not free us from the law of sin, but it helps us to mortify the deeds of the body. For every, listen to this, for every ethical imperative in the scripture, there is a corresponding theological indicative. For every ethical imperative, there is a corresponding theological indicative. In other words, whatever God tells you you need to do, he gives you the enablement 
to do it. God would not tell you to modify the deeds of the body if he didn't give you the power in order to get that done. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The same spirit that set us free from the law of sin and death has taken up residence within us, producing in us that mindset which tends towards the doing of God's will and gives us a way to modify the deeds of the flesh. When you allow the Holy Spirit to do his perfect work, he then gives you the power, the enablement, the strength to do what God calls you to do to modify your flesh. You can't do it in your own strength. Because if you're like me, one day you wake up full of power and the Holy Spirit and say, this day is going to be a great day. I'm going to live for God all day long. I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to walk outside the line. I'm not going to draw outside the boundaries. I'm going to stay right there because I just had a wonderful devotion. I got up early and gave God praise and honor and glory. And this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And about 8.30, uh, some of y'all about 7.15, you go right back to what you say you wasn't going to do because you nor I have the spiritual power on our own to modify the deeds of this body. As a matter of fact, we have this power. We just lay it aside to do what we want to do. It's very convenient and it's very easy to lay it aside when we want to do what we want to do because you only live once. I mean, get all the gusto you can. Squeeze all the juice out of life you can. Tomorrow may never come. You only live once. Enjoy yourself. Eat, drink, and be merry, because you may never die. But the scripture says it's appointed unto man once to die. And if that was all there was to it, you could do whatever you want to do. But the scripture says after this comes the judgment. I'd be the biggest fool in Houston if I didn't sincerely believe that when this life is over, I'm going to have to give an account. I'm going to have to stand before God and give a reckoning of my stewardship. I've got to tell God what I did with the gifts that he gave me, with the talents, with the resources, with the money, with the spiritual enablement that he gave me. I've got to give God an account for that because I'm not just living once. I got to live again. And I got to live again somewhere. Everybody listening to my voice, you're going to live twice. But you have to determine where you're going to live. Will you live forever with God in heaven in eternity? Or will you live forever separated from the face of God in hell for eternity? God does not send anybody to hell. But he'll step out of the way if that's where you're trying to go. Listen to me, saints. You got to knock Jesus down to go to hell. Because Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart, but open the door and my father and I will come in and sup with you. 